Hey everybody, welcome to Brick Vault. Today is another LEGO Top 10 Mocks of the Week where I show you the coolest custom creations I happen to find people building in LEGO bricks throughout this last week. I don't normally say or label uh, how many episodes deep we are into this series, but I just checked the lineup right now and we are on episode 225 of this weekly series, which is pretty cool. Links to everybody I'm talking about are in the description below. If you have any extra time, I highly, highly, highly recommend that you check out these designers that we're talking about. Also, before we jump in, Jarek has designed another TIE Fighter design. This is the Mining Guild TIE Fighter with the cutout segments in the front of the wings and the very distinctive and bright yellow color scheme. There's also a 15% off pre-order sale for the new Republic gunships from David Buckles, and this includes five different variations of the ship with tons of extra details. Right oh, let's jump into some honorable mentions now. This is Fantastical Forest Flight from Lego Mania. Really interesting strategy to show how he got the shape for the wings, and there's the nice little line detailing that pops up on a hummingbird's wings like that. For Ving Week, there has been a mixed themes build contest. This is crashing into Classic Castle, so Star Wars and Classic Castle from Valerius Maximus. Mountain Hobbit has a Chinese Hobbit hole with some great colors together. So that would be Chinese New Year and of course Lord of the Rings mixed together. And I don't know if they coordinated this, they probably didn't, but Carter Witz also added Lord of the Rings, and this is The Bunker of Bag Endor. Easily the best title for sure. Shannon Sproul made some Rorschach tests out of Lego, which is pretty fun. This one sort of looks like a crab on a beach to me, but there's seven others. Here is Mera, the Metalworks Tiger from Daniel Brixon. Tino Potienen has created the build called Trio, very stark and eerie. And holy guacamole, this is massive, amazingly detailed from Remco Rohan. This is Anakin's Repulsor Craft mock. And I just read the title, so that must be like the technical name for his pod racer that he built. Grant Davis has an amazing iron gray scene. More of the sand green spoilers are being used for the contest. Carter Witz's courtyard has some excellent organic details. Love the perspective here from Ron Folkers. This is Vader's meditation chamber. Really awesome use of the larger brick built fig there. Another model from Grant Davis. It's called Unscheduled Maintenance. And can you find the Star Wars specific piece in this build? Here's a work in progress pick from Nick Trotta just to give you guys an idea of how complex some of these larger models can be on the inside. The Atomic Ranch seen from Builder Paul has some wonderful colors. And frankly, there's just so many good builds, but I do not have time to get into everything. So let's check out the top 10. First one up here is from Andrew Steele. This is Proto Weapon XV1 Night Crawler. Here is a huge brick built figure with some wonderful large cylindrical elements added to parts of the body. And then a much thinner and more raw, almost muscular kind of detailing done with dark red around the forearms, legs, chest, and neck. Easily my favorite part of this build is the face. I love the golden teeth and those small red dots for eyes. And this is also a build that really would have you floored in terms of scale. I don't know how big it is exactly, but it's a massive, massive figure. Henjin Quilonis titled this Robots Make Poor Life Choices. Choices. This is another vehicle spoiler build that's been part of the contest recently. You can see it in the fan, bottoms of the feet, and then even a little bit of it hidden in the back, creating those vents around the lights. The scene itself just works extremely well with that wonderful top light coming down and really highlighting this robotic figure who is, I suppose, a glorified janitor. Perhaps he wasn't built originally designed for this task, but like the title says, poor life choices have brought him uh, here in his life, and I wonder why he's being guarded by a guy with a gun. Once again, part of the same build contest from Grant Davis, who's competing against uh, Hinge and Quilonis. This is Life on the Rocks. And that's what really grabbed my eye for this build uh, initially, was the rocks themselves. You don't normally get such a rounded, smoothed over series of shapes. Often the Lego community really likes to play around with different size angular slope pieces, and that's just considered rock shapes for a lot of the builds. But you can see that Grant really played around with some bigger, larger, smoother ideas in terms of the shapes of these boulders. And it kind of works. And maybe they were even rounded over by the ocean a little bit. The build for the structure is absolutely awesome. You can obviously see where those spoilers took place. Now the builder JF technically says this is a work in progress, or at least it's titled that way, but it's finished enough 
to go to a brick fair soon. This is the minifig scale Gozanti. The shaping for this model is very, very good. If you take a close look at the side paneling along the top of the ship, it's not a straight line by any means. JF really took the time to add very long, very slow angles that cut all the way from the very tail to the nose of the build. The thrusters integrate into the wings excellently, and if he can get that new Bo-Katan mini figure fast enough, he might even be able to set up a scene from The Mandalorian by the time uh, the show comes around, if that's of course what he wants to do. I think this goes on my list of some of my favorite figures for the year so far in Lego Bricks. The creativity and just the, the universe around this strange scene has just got my head scratching in so many different ways. This is titled Pet Metal from Joxon. The body shape for the female figure is so unique and kind of strange with the tall legs and long boots. The whole figure, in fact, kind of gets wider into a point when you get to the very top. And then when we have this other person, creature, uh, maybe a robot, I'm thinking a robot, the disproportionately large arms look great. They almost function as legs here. And that's kind of a perfect use for the Kylo Ren helmet and the uh, Lord of the Rings ring that make up the head and eye. Just some really, really clever uses of pieces playing around with body proportions. It's just an excellent scene. And now we're looking at the Biolab from Mountain Hobbit. I enjoy that the entire sort of space-like background of the scene is done almost totally monochrome. There's very few uh, subtle variations. It's mostly light bluish gray and that really allows your eye to get drawn to each one of these different organic areas. Most of the plants are sealed off due to probably environmental conditions that the uh, little capsules are trying to simulate. And there's just some wonderful, clever little shapes very subtly hidden in this build. Now, number four moving down is not a single build. We're looking at uh, ships from all different designers here. This is Cat Squadron, and it's a collaboration between Waffles, Intert, Tim Goddard, Caleb Ricks, Thomas Jenkins, Gooby, and Malin Garrick. Some of these designers are guys that we work with and sell creations in the web store. And I knew there was like rumblings that they were like building together or communicating about ship design, but this release did actually take me by surprise. There are some amazing shapes and many of the designs, or I think all the designs are at least inspired by an Instagram artist going by the name of Space Goose, who I also had never heard of. You let me know which one of these ships is your personal favorite. And once again, I highly recommend you check out all these links in the description below. So number four, by the way, this is seven different ships. Number three is from an absolutely insane micro city builder from Rocco Butlier. This is the first century Jerusalem. In subtitles, it says second temple period circa 70 CE. So just like his other absolutely massive micro scale cities, I'm convinced that the details you're looking at here are extremely accurate. This designer uh, takes his time to research top graphical maps and makes sure to figure out exactly where everything is going to go, what the details are going to look like, and when you get close to this huge model, you'll realize that it's not just impressive with the size, but there are some wonderful creative liberties taken here with some very clever little micro connections. This is going to be a permanent exhibition in the Museum of Sao Paulo, and it's just awesome to see that this designer is getting paid to do uh, some truly amazing work. You really should check out the closer pictures of it. I can't even show close to all of what is actually up on his Flickr page right now. Here is a familiar building from Kang Hyun. It's an awesome construction scene and I like that it's all slightly scaled up. You can see that the figures are not in fact mini figures, but instead they are all the figs from the Jack Stone theme. I think the builds for the scaffolding look excellent. The slightly upscaled brick detailing actually really works here. Some of those longer red pieces are bending and bowing as support structures under one of those areas, which just gives that nice authentic most organic feel to this build and someone let me know what they think that sand green vertical strut detailing is on the outer edge of the creation. All right, and moving on to number one, this is a GBC build or a great ball contraption titled Five Tilted Rings by the designer Akiyuki. Now this exists uh, as a YouTube video, which I am saying you have to watch. I'm not even gonna show you uh, anything close to the full video, just a very basic mini clip from what is a extremely well done uh, video that shows off 
off one of the greatest just visual elements ever pulled off for a great ball contraption. The tilted rings is such an excellent design where the mechanics of it seem simple enough, but there are just some wonderful little subtle design elements that make this whole thing look quite easy and straightforward, but in fact, it's just an incredibly complex and well-balanced design. Generally speaking, great ball contraptions have not been creations that usually draw my eye, but every once in a while something really, really special comes around. And if you don't click to watch his video at the end of this video, then you are definitely, definitely missing out. But seriously, if you have any extra time, I highly recommend you check out all these creative people I've been showing off in this video today. Let me know which ones were your favorite. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. If you enjoy our content, you can always like, subscribe, comment, share, and we'll see you next time at Brick Vault.